Good morning and welcome to Superintendent Community Update for Friday, March 25th, 2022. Here we are, end of end of March already. I think we're just talking talking of shoot seems like yesterday. Um, you know, the idea of March in, in like a lion, out like a lamb. I'm not sure it's going to go. It's it's going very quietly as it's going to be in the uh, in the 20s and even colder this weekend. Uh, so uh, March is going to end probably a lot of the way it began, very cold. Uh, but here we are moving forward, and uh, April 1st next Friday already. Can't believe it. It's, it's moving fast. So I'm going to start with positive news and, sh and shout-outs. And the first is um, today, Friday, across the Baldwin Whitehall School District is Purple Day, and you think, well, okay, looks. You really went out on a on a limb on this one. Uh, a fr Friday in purple in the Baltimore White Hall community, uh, not a big stretch. But the reason that we're doing it today is a little bit different, and it's a lot. Actually, it's a lot different. Uh, Epilepsy Awareness Day is being celebrated tomorrow, March 26, but we won't be in, in session tomorrow. Um, and Epilepsy Awareness Day or Purple Day was created to increase the public's understanding of the brain dis dis disorder, eliminate fear and stigma uh, that is surrounding it, and um, how it came to us, uh, and and really the the shout out goes specifically to uh, one of our own seventh grader Nathan. I'm sorry, Logan Hewalt. There's a Nathan later. I'm sorry, uh, Logan Hewalt, uh, seventh grader at Baldwin Middle School, uh, and I'm really thankful to Logan. Logan started emailing my myself and Mr. Giglione, our school board president, uh, about a month and a half ago, and asked if if there was anything we can do around this topic. Um, and, and, and really sent a couple fantastic emails with some great detail. Uh, you talk about advocacy and, and where does advocacy start? There's nothing magical about it. It's about believing in something, feeling feeling that something's very important, and then and then working on that topic. And so uh, this is something that that's very special to Logan. It's very important to him. Uh, he gave us some statistics and 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 what this has meant to him uh, as far as um, importance. And I thought this was a great way to to um, to show our support. So while purple is a very natural color, as I'm sitting here in, in my purple uh, jersey today, and I have my purple wall behind you, and maybe on the screen it looks blue, but it is purple. Uh, purple is not a tough color to come by in the Baltimore White Hall School District. But but today, on Friday, March 25th, we can wear it for a different purpose, and we can thank Logan uh, for his incredible advocacy in and around this topic. Special shout out to um, a couple other areas. And I want to give a shout out to uh, some unsung heroes today. And first, our, subst our substitutes. I um, mean, think about the, the labor shortage that all industries are working through. And education uh, is no different. If, if we're different, then it's hitting us even harder because it's, it's hitting so many different aspects of our work, uh, whether it's from the professional side. Uh, whether it's the paraprofessional or, or, uh, or service employees, uh, and, and then in certain and certificated people, you know, like, like uh, with um, bus drivers that need to be certificated in a different manner than, than a professional um, aspect. Um, it is just very, very difficult to staff. Um, and while our absentee rate due to matters such as COVID and the pandemic have decreased, we still have folks that, that are not able to be at work for a variety of other reasons that were not pandemic in nature at all. Um, we have a very young staff. So we have a, we have a young staff that uh, is beginning to, to, to build their own families. And so folks are out on, on, on different types of leaves that requires substitutes. Uh, folks that still get sick, uh, folks that still get hurt, uh, and folks that still need to, to take off uh, for different appointments and things of that nature, just like we all do. Uh, and, and when that happens, there, we do need substitutes. There are, there are many positions in our world that when folks miss, all the work is waiting for us when we get back to the office, and there's no doubt about that. Uh, but when kids are coming into the, into the buildings, we need to have substitutes there and be, have them prepared uh, adequately for not only leading the kids in the classroom, but also all of the things that go with substitute teaching and teaching today uh, with all of the Canvas pages and, and other technologies. And so um, a shout out to our subs, and we employ subs, let's talk about the classroom subs here for a moment. We employ folks in a variety of different ways and, and different reasons. So we have our daily subs. 
So those who still are, are and, and there's less of these because um, they're just not, the availability just doesn't exist um, as much anymore. But the, the, the substitutes that get that phone call daily at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or what have you, and then are out looking uh, for that work. Uh, they're into the building. And so every day could be a different adventure for them. Uh, again, not so many any, any longer just for, for the nature of what we do now. Uh, we have our building subs, our, our super subs, once those who know every single day they're coming into a building, but yet their assignment can be different every day. And so um, one of the ways that the Baltimore Hill School District has tried to, to meet the demands in regard to staffing is, is employing more building subs and less daily subs. Um, we want to make sure that we can get our hooks into as many folks as we can and, and we commit to them. And so um, as a building sub, you know you're going into our buildings each day, whether it's the high school being um, the middle school or the high school aspect of, of that building over at Harrison, uh, McAnally, Whitehall, et cetera. So you know you're going there every single day. But then when you walk in the front door, um, <laughs> I guess that's when the real adventure begins because then you get to see what your assignment may be. And so whether that's um, a phys ed class, an art class, uh, a class, a regular homeroom class, or all three of those in the same day because that, that can happen as well. We also have our long-term substitutes uh, those that are filling in for a specific person for a, a longer period of time, and whether it's somebody that's out again on a, like a maternity leave or a, pater uh, a per paternity leave uh, or other types of injuries or, 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 or illnesses or things of that nature, uh, we know that we have folks that are in there every day and they're doing the lesson planning. They're, they are the teacher. They're doing all the work that goes into teaching the classroom. And sometimes the pay doesn't match up so well, and, and we respect that. Uh, the Baltimore Hill School District has worked the last few years and with a fantastic partner, uh, Substitute Teacher Services, STS, uh, to create some different types of models or programs. And, and actually the things that we are doing or uh, others are trying to replicate across the state, which makes me pretty proud that, that we're doing some things that, that people are noticing for a variety of reasons in, in this area, how we're employing subs. Uh, so we have a daily rate. Uh, it, it's it's commensurable with, with what's around us, $125 a day. So uh, no one's getting rich on that. I, I understand that. Uh, in some areas, we're higher. Other, other schools are not even at 100 yet. Where there's other schools that are higher than us. I get I get that. Uh, but we want folks to be committed to us as well. So each quarter, uh, if folks work, I think it's 40 days out of the 45 each nine weeks, uh, we pay a thousand dollar bonus. Um, and so that does increase your daily rate. I guess you could look at it that way. But it really, we want folks coming here. We want folks committed to here, and, and we want to commit to, to them as well. Um, and our subs are a great resource when we start to look at staffing for, for vacancies that do open up. Thinking about next year, and we just had our staffing meeting just this week, uh, looking at what needs exist for next year, what retirements are coming up, where we might be expanding, or where enrollment is telling us we need more, where enrollment might be telling us we need less. Uh, all of that happens about this time of year, and then that, that information goes out to teachers within the next few weeks, and then teachers have time to, to make some decisions or at least think about what they want to do for next year, if a change is in their cards, or maybe they want to stay where they're at. All that happens uh, right around this time, and then we get ready for uh, that notice to go out late May and so forth. But, but our substitutes are a place where we can really start to look um, at the talent pool that we have. Interviewing is such an imprecise science. I'm not even sure it's a science. I'm not sure it's an art and maybe somewhere in between. But when you have three interviews, 45 minutes in length, and you're making a 35 year commitment on somebody after essentially meeting them three times and the impact that they have on, on, on your children and within the classrooms and in the teaching rooms, uh, uh, that's it, it, it's, it's a big decision. We want to make sure that we get it right. So being able to see our substitutes teaching daily out in the classrooms I'm um, kind of like that on-the-job training. That's even more valuable than the interview. So a special shout-out for our substitutes. Uh, really doing incredible work. Uh, March is a tough time of year for everybody. And for those who uh, are, are doing this type of work and really at the mercy of, of so many different conditions throughout the course of the day and the week, uh, again, special shout-out to you. Uh, two other shout-outs. Uh, got a nice note this morning in regard to uh, one of our custodians. Uh, Al Polarski is a custodian over at Whitehall. And a real nice shout out from, from a teacher uh, in regard to the work that he's been doing there within the last couple of weeks. And Al was one of our outside custodians and so one of our 
um, landscape uh, type of folks that you know, from the shoveling of snow in the winter time to, to the raking of leaves and the trimming of bushes and, and nearly everything in between. Uh, Al's been with us a long time. Um, and uh, he just simply he moved inside the Whitehall and, and the impact that he's been having there and the change that, that the teachers are seeing there. So uh, I've known Al for a long time. Our kids grew up together. Al, thank you for what you do. Please keep up the great work um, and uh, keep servicing the kids. That's what it's all about. And lastly, in our, our positive news shout outs, I just want to say thank you to, I think it was 63 people that were on the call this past week for our, our initial strategic planning or comprehensive planning uh, video call. Uh, again, 63 people from about 4.30 to 5.30, give or take a few minutes. And so thank you for giving your time. We had a lot of teachers, administrators, uh, and, and just a fantastic group of parents. Uh, most of the conversation was just that. It was, it was a lot of conversation. It was breakout sessions, and it felt like we were just a mile wide and maybe only an, an inch deep on content so far. Uh, but that's where I wanted to be. I, I think it was important for everyone to have a chance to talk about schooling, talk about where the Baltimore Waterloo School District has been for the past two years, things that we did well, things that maybe we, like I said, stumbled out of the gate on, and maybe we never, never quite caught up. And that's okay. We need. You know, this isn't all about just the glory and the wonderful things. It's about, you know, what can we do better? Where, where do we want to be? So, where are we as a school district? And what is the school district? What does that school district look like that we want to be? And whether it's a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, because all of those steps along the way are very, very important. Because we can't get to where we want to be and say, say, 2025. Because there's there's something about that with the Learning 2025 program and 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 where districts need to be by 2025. And, and there's great aspirations, but that work starts now. Because you don't just simply flip a switch and we transform an entity that has been as fast moving as a, as a glacier. It just, and it's not, not a knock on Baldwin Whitehall, it's a knock on education as it stands as an entity because um, the schooling that the that, that, that majority of what we do now is not significantly different than the schooling that if you're a parent, uh, what you went through maybe in, in, in 15, 20 years ago, uh, or our grandparents and our parents went through maybe even a, a much longer time ago. And COVID made all of those processes look a lot more like what our grandparents sat through. So how do we move forward uh, and, and, and continue to refine that work? So thank you to the strategic planning group for, for what you have done. Um, COVID, in the schools, uh, COVID in the schools update, and, and I really love the fact that this part of our update each Friday will, will keep getting smaller and smaller, and the numbers just keep getting smaller and smaller, too, and it's really important uh, that we keep doing the things right. Two cases this week, uh, two last week, I think it was. Uh, it might have been one last week. My numbers, my, my, my note here, I may not have updated that correctly. Uh, we have one case at the high school. We have one case over at Harrison. Uh, we have zero staff numbers. Across the county, we did our call yesterday. It was the shortest call I can remember. I think it was 12 minutes. Uh, so I, I like that. I like 12-minute calls with the county. I don't need hour and a half calls with the county. I have other things I could be, be working on. Seven-day average is down to 63 cases per day on an average down from 82. And then the slide deck is there for you if you're interested in that type of uh, information. Let's jump into some neat things that are happening across the district. And so uh, one is, is that uh, the district has long supported a uh, concept called partners, partners classes. And whether that's in a, uh, a phys ed classroom, whether that's in a music room uh, and, and, and just other environments. And, and so we got some really nice feedback this past week from a parent in regard to a partners PE class. And, and, and I don't know all the background and, and I, I'll withhold some of the names uh, because it's just uh, personal and, and private and it's not, not for me to share, but the concept I think is for me to share because it's just for some, some wonderful uh, things happening. Um, the background seems to be that there were there has been some challenges, some challenging behaviors, some challenge, challenging aspects of what's going on um, in, in this parent's world in, involving her daughter. And so she has to come in and, and to observe the classroom to get a better perspective as to what was happening and maybe some of the triggers or, or, or those types of things with her child and, and maybe what she was seeing at home once the child was coming home. And again, maybe I'm speculating a little bit, but I don't think I'm too far off. So the feedback came, and I'll just read it because I think it just t it tells the story. Um, hello, please forward this to the gym teacher as well. Thank you for letting me observe my daughter in gym today. I think it definitely helped me to see 
the environment and potential triggers for her, as well as understanding where you guys are coming from. I also can't commend the students in that class enough. And here's really the powerful piece. I can't commend the students in that class enough. They truly treat these kids as humans and as equals. And it comes so naturally, which unfortunately in today's world is something that is rare for people with disabilities to come across. Very, very blessed to see that today. And everyone from the students to the staff that made this happen today deserves that recognition. And thank you. And this came from the mom. And so really that, that type of, of uh, that care and, and the, the, this was Mr. Keeley's, um, I believe it was Mr. Keeley's classroom um, that, uh, that the, the, the parent had observed, um, the structure that's set up, what, what we're trying to, to do with that partner's model where you have a student with special needs paired up with a student without special needs um, or not identified in, in that particular manner and, and that, that mentorship that happens um, with the teacher but also absent of the teacher and just the incredible things. Uh, it, that type of model uh, just permeates our, 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 our unified sports. We have bocce, we have some other sports in the, in the, in the unified model and then in a few weeks We'll be participating and we'll be hosting the summer games for the Special Olympics. Um, and we just, it's just so, so incredible to see what happens during those types of events. So thank you for that, um, that little update about that program. Sticking with the, um, the, the athletic side or, or, or the, at least the activity side, athletic update uh, for this week's spring sports are starting today. And so it's starting to get into competition. And thank you to Mr. Cherico for sending over an update. So softball, freshman baseball, and boys lacrosse all have home games. Uh, so hopefully uh, the weather holds out, of course, and then it's going to be 20 degrees this weekend. And so what, what that does to these outdoor sports makes it kind of tough. Uh, Saturday tracks at Upper St. Clair for an invitational, and volleyball travels to Norwin for a tournament. Um, our varsity and JV baseball teams are actually en route. I think they're still en route to Myrtle Beach for spring training. Uh, they'll return. They will be returning home on Tuesday. And. And that's a trip like three years in the making where they wanted to, to, to be going in 2020. And, the, and that group was fundraising uh, to get down there under Coach Bucci's uh, guidance as, as Coach came to us uh, just a few years ago. And, and this was really something that, that he wanted to do and, and to, to help get the kids ready for the season. Uh, because, again, uh, Western Pennsylvania weather and, and everything goes with it. Um, and that got canceled in 2020, and, and we were still just having so many challenges last spring. So I look forward to hearing about the, the, the kids and the trip and the opportunity that they've had to, to get better, and I look forward to the, how that plays out in the season. Uh, next week is a full slate of games for schedules, rosters, scores, pictures, and more. Please visit the athletic website um, through the district webpage or directly at baldwin.bigteams.com, and, and that link will be in the notes. Uh, so... While we're giving time for music or time to athletics and, and, and activity, let's talk about music as well. And a couple of really great highlights. Um, our district cor uh, choirs from Harrison, Whitehall, Baldwin Middle, as well as Baldwin High, uh, will perform the national anthem at the Pirate Game on Saturday, June 4th. Yes, there's, there will be a baseball season. <laughs> they did finalize their CBA and they're in spring training now. Um, I guess the world is all about the, uh, the, the, uh, March Madness right now, but but baseball is coming. Uh, so Saturday, June 4th. Uh, so if you'd like to, I'm sorry, sa yeah, Saturday, June 4th. Um, if you'd like to support our singers and, and enjoy a night at the ballpark, uh, ticket orders are due ASAP in, in your building's uh, choral, to your building's choral music teacher. Uh, so please check that out. I'm pretty sure that that, um, that flyer went out via uh, email from our office a couple weeks ago. Uh, we can try to uh, scrape that up again and send that out to you once once more. But if you're interested, check with your building school teacher and we can get you tickets for that game. High School Musical, uh, a little closer to home and, and, and closer in time. High School Musical is this weekend it starts. So the Baller High School will be presenting Frank Loser and Abe Barrows how, how to succeed in business without really trying. If you had a chance to see yesterday on Pittsburgh Today Live, uh, they, we had a, a really fantastic segment on there with two of our two of our children and, and our musical theater director were able to to be on that that program. Really, an opportunity to to share what we've been doing, some of the challenges that have, have come up over the past couple of years, um, as well as um, performing a number. And so, Quentin, you did a fantastic job yesterday. I really enjoyed 
watching that. Um, of course, remembering that we were doing Adam's Family and that got canceled abruptly and Quentin had a shaved head um, really uh, for nothing that, that particular year. But um, our show this year, this Sunday is the senior 62 and older. Um, that is the matinee preview performance, Sunday, March 27th at 1 p.m. And then the show really gets moving next week, March 30th through April 7th, 7 p.m. And all, all of these shows are at the Dr. Regis V. Shalley Performing Arts Center at Baldwin High School. Calendar reminder, because it's coming fast, uh, April 1st, next Friday, that is a full remote day for students. Uh, on the teacher side, uh, there's a clerical aspect of it as we wrap up the third nine weeks and get ready for the fourth nine weeks, the home stretch. Uh, that, that's a clerical day uh, where teachers get a chance to, again, work on report cards, get, the, get, get grades finalized. And um, so the morning will be synchronous. The morning will be a time to connect with your teacher. The afternoon really is asynchronous and it's really a time just to get the, your, your homework done or any other type of assignments that uh, may have been uh, assigned for that morning or at any other time. But uh, April 1st, full remote day, half synchronous in the morning, half asynchronous in the afternoon. Just a, just a couple questions, really, really uh, not many. Um, the first one, with the mask mandate being optional, will the district still be following the symptom checker? And, and, and the answer is yes. Um, and I think the symptom checker is, is really, it, it's a great resource. And maybe that's one of those things, maybe with some, uh, some adaptation um, that really can help us as we move forward, just keep kids healthy, keep, keep the healthy kids in school and keep the, the sick kids at home. I mean, there, there's nothing that, that can be more frustrating at times than, than, than kids coming to school that are really shouldn't be in school. Um, stay home, take the day, take a couple days. Um, the symptom checker has helped us bring that conversation more into the forefront as far as what we should be looking for and whether it's a common cold or whether it's something else. Our nurses have been outstanding. I probably should have put them up uh, with, within the shout outs as well because their work has just been just fantastic in, in assisting parents and, and, and what information that they need and what all that looks like. But yeah, we, we should be following the symptom checker. We should continue to do those things uh, to keep healthy kids in and have sick kids stay home and just take the time that they need and then get back as soon as they're able to do so. Um, there was a question, and, and, and I guess I can, without getting into too much detail, there was, uh, what is the reason to be brought into the office on so-called protocol for no reason? This came out of the high school. Um, and, and so I think it's important to, to answer the question and, and talk about this a little bit. Um, you know, when the high school administration is, 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 is investigating different types of things, uh, and whether that's, in, in some particular cases, maybe related to um, activities in restrooms. Uh, you know, we have different types of, of equipment in, uh, that we've purchased uh, throughout the course of the year, so most of it with grants. Um, vaping continues to be a massive problem, and it, it wasn't for a long time, especially, I guess, when kids weren't in school and no one was vaping in school. Uh, but it continues to be a problem, and it's a growing problem. And so, um, sometimes in order to to get to an investigation, folks, you know, if if you're around where trouble was happening, then uh, there have to be some efforts to to find out whether you were part of it or or maybe just an innocent bystander. Um, but is there ever just truly innocent bystanders? And if there's trouble that's happening, if there's things that are happening around you that you don't agree with, uh, my best advice is to not be part of it. To get out of that situation, um, if it's in a restroom, uh, you know, take care of business and then get out. Get get out of the restroom. Don't be hanging out somewhere where you don't need to be, especially if you don't agree with the activity. Um, if you're part of it, even if you're just there as a bystander or an observer, then I think the administration has every opportunity and every right to ask a few questions to find out truly what was the involvement. Next question and the last question, will the lunchroom at HEC be converted back to pre-COVID seating soon? Um, and the question about knowing that there were issues with staging, but uh, couldn't a pot or other facility be used in the meantime to get the kids back seated properly? Um, about talking about the, the younger kids never been having an opportunity to sit at tables with their peers as we enter the fourth, the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, that's just, we're running into the same thing at the high school. Uh, you know, we have individual desks there. Um, the biggest issue in regard to resetting the cafeterias was to make sure that the, uh, the cafeteria activity was happening in the cafeteria, or at least the food service activity was happening in the cafeteria. 
So our priority was Mac and Audi and Whitehall because we were running uh, two different cafeterias. We had the main cafeteria, then a satellite space. Uh, and that continued to be very difficult, uh, not only on, on our on our crew, uh, as far as food service, but also supervision of students, and then even having the availability of those spaces for things like phys ed and so forth. Um, and yes, Harrison did not have that same issue. Everyone was eating lunch in the cafeteria, and yes, they were individual tables, uh, seats and, and desks and so forth. Um, there is desire to, to, to get that back. Uh, all of the the existing or the the previous furniture uh, has been assembled i think it's all in the theater area um, but it's just a matter of, of of making that switch and so conversations are con continuing to ha happen as far as when the right time to do that is and what's going to be needed in order to do that um, yes we are entering the fourth quarter but let's let's flip that script a little bit for the last couple of years the procedures and, and all of the um, processes as far as how kids are eating lunch in that space um, have been geared around how they're doing it now. And so kids will need to be re retaught, retrained, looking at the staffing and what complications come with that it, along with the positives. Um, and, I, and I get both sides of that. Um, we don't want to create a problem by trying to, to fix one. Um, and so we'll continue to, to, to look at that topic and kind of see where we are. Um, and, and we do want to get the furniture back in we do want to get back to normal but as much as some folks say hey we, we got let's keep pushing it's pushing we know that there's also a part of our population says hey can I hold on put the brakes on i've got little ones at home and, and and i've received emails like that this week as much as we're pushing in some areas there are other folks that, that they're still very very nervous and so you know it's tough schools have to be uh, it's our job to be as accommodating as we can to all groups because we know that there's folks on both ends of that spectrum and everything in between. So our ending thoughts and, uh, and, and, and final reflections, you know, it is spring, you know, even though we're going to be down in the 20s again this weekend, it is spring and it is the beginning of construction season. And not necessarily talking about construction within the district, but we will be. Uh, we're talking about parking lots and, and paving and sidewalks and all that. That is why I got an email this morning about the pothole that's in the central office parking lot. And, and we know that. So that's coming but also in the community with barrels and cones and you know what they say that what, what's the uh the, the the state animal of pennsylvania the the barrel <laughs> i've heard that one before uh, but also in all seriousness we have uh, the, the the flaggers that are out there uh, helping with traffic um add to that buses and bus stops and and sun glare you know in the morning uh, as we're trying to move it around spaces and and the, Hopefully the mornings where the sun is, is bright and beautiful, um, it also makes it really tough to see sometimes and the people that are out there doing this, this essential work. So I'm asking uh, to, to continue to be vigilant, be careful, uh, because again, all that construction continues to happen. Um, but, but then with construction, I guess here's my final thought. You know, this kind of fits into that category, things that make you say, hmm. Um, you know, in my neighborhood, you know, they, they just started uh, another construction project. And so yesterday I had a chance to observe some of this. You know, Cathell Road uh, from Churchill down to Glass Run, a good portion of that was paved last year. They did beautiful work and, 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 and all the storm stores were rebuilt and, 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 and the pavement beautiful and smooth and the money that was spent on it. Yesterday, yesterday they began replacing the gas lines and cutting apart. <laughs> And cutting apart all that work. And I guess my final reflection and thoughts is, is why? Who talks to who before that type of thing happens? And if, and if we know that the gas lines are, are, are ready to be replaced, um, why do we pave? Just The pavement was just done, I think, prior to first snow last year. But then as soon as the winter is over, we're cutting apart the road that we just fixed. Um, Things that make you say, hmm. So we tried not to do that here as we as we do our projects and we're doing our construction and, and trying to do that in a very systematic way that we don't do one thing and then the next thing that we do causes us to undo the thing that we did beforehand and cost uh, taxpayers additional dollars. We know that uh, we love the support that we get from our local community. 96% of, of, of folks pay their taxes on time. 70% of our budget is built on local taxes. Um, we know what that means to us and we appreciate it. We want to make sure we're doing the right things by it. Uh, 
I can't say until next week because there won't be an update next week. Um, I'm going to be out of the office, uh, but I will be seeing everyone on April 8th. Uh, and that will actually be from Harrisburg. I'll be there for an advocacy meeting. Um, and so I'll make sure that we do the live update prior to that meeting starting. So until Friday, April 8th, please be safe, be kind to one another, and show some grace. Thank you, and have a great weekend.